scope. Now one last thing I wanted to warn about is just basically to say don't get too excited. We did not at all finish learning everything we need to know to make basic uh, C++ programs. There is still a lot missing and uh, making programs with all you know right now comes out to be a pretty dumb way of making it. I'm saying this because I have a very brilliant uh, viewer who went on the forums and made an amazing program with the console program uh, project with which you can uh, like walk around different rooms pick up different items and fight with different monsters or something like that and I was pretty impressed by how this viewer uh, made do with whatever he knew about C++, whatever we learned until now because in truth is, like I said, we by all means we do not know enough at all to be able to make real cool sense making stuff in C++ yet and let me explain a little bit about how this viewer made his uh, room system I'm just gonna mention the point at which I'd like to highlight there was a function which was called uh, something like enter room which I'll declare right over here void enter room and the way it worked was let's go see the definition basically inside the enter room function uh, different stuff stuff would happen I just replaced that with uh, the ellipsis right over here and at some point if uh, the program decided then the player would enter the room now at first glance this could look a little weird a little confusing when you are inside the enter room function and you are calling the function enter room but in C++ this is supported this is valid C++ code it is called uh, recursive when you're inside a function and you're calling that very same function you are making that function recur itself inside of itself so while this system works very nicely so that you can enter from one room to a different room by calling this same function again from inside the same function and like I said I was pretty impressed with the way this viewer made his program and I successfully wandered around the uh, virtual map of all the rooms going from one room to the other room by calling this recursive function however let me explain what really happens over here because in a real program when we're going to learn a few more techniques about programming you'll see that this is not at all the way to go inside your computer's CPU which probably does not look like this but I'm just using this image as an example you have different parts as you see right over here and these different parts take care of uh, different uh, aspects of running your program one of these parts will probably take care of reading the instructions reading through your code another part probably takes care of uh, putting stuff in system memory and then taking stuff back from system memory and one of these parts will be keeping track of which function are we inside and which function did we come from and stuff like that here's a little uh, demonstration about how it would uh, pretty much work at the beginning of the program as we enter the main function this uh, part of the CPU will remember that we are inside the main function and it'll probably store that in system memory for the meanwhile next as the program goes on and we go into a function probably which is called uh, do stuff or something then uh, this same piece of the CPU will remember that from the main function we went on to do stuff function and it will probably also keep track about what variables we passed in as parameters and how many bytes each one of them are in size but forget about that part for now right now we're going to continue our program as we continue the program and we call this other function do more stuff we add that to our list of functions that we are inside as soon as the function do more stuff finishes so we're done with this part of the list we delete that and we go back to wherever we were inside the do stuff function because of course we learned as you remember that functions when functions are called then the program just executes whatever is inside that function and then when the function is finished we come right back to where we came from so in a big program of course you're gonna go many 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 levels deep inside piling up functions one on top of the other and then slowly but surely as the program finishes when each function returns 
we slowly but surely go back to the beginning until, until ultimately we're by the main function and we finish the program. However, if the program is made in such a way that it will recursively call a function again and again and again without stopping to return back to where we came from once in a while, at some point you risk uh, the problem of running out of memory because for each time you call the function inside of the same function we have to use up again a little more memory to remember that we are inside this function which is inside this other function which is inside this other function etc 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 as a matter of fact Visual Studio has a visualizer for this function tracker as you see right over here this is the main function which starts the program and after a while of playing this game I have 50 calls to the enter function piled up one on top of the other because all we were doing the whole time is going inside of a function inside of a function inside of a function without ever returning out of those functions as the program goes on and that is simply because like I said before there is still a lot of very basic C++ things which I didn't teach yet and without those different stuff those different functionalities the only way you could make such a game where you go from one room to another etc is just by pretty much doing it this way but stay tuned for future videos where we'll learn the real way how to go about doing such things when we will learn about global variables pointers and references